Welcome back to Noir Alley. I'm Eddie Muller, your dispatcher for the long, crazy cab ride you're about to take through New York City. Your destination? 99 River Street. The good news is that long, crazy nights in a big, cold city make for great film noir. So while the next 83 minutes don't go particularly well for cab driver Ernie Driscoll, they do add up to one of the most satisfying films on the resume of director Phil Carlson. I'm a sucker for movies that play out over the course of a single night, especially ones with lots of sketchy stuff going on in back rooms at 3 a.m. while normal people are on the nod. This is practically a subgenre of noir, with titles like Deadline at Dawn, Crossfire, The Setup, Night in the City, and City That Never Sleeps. There are plenty more, of course, but 99 River Street may be at the top of the list. It is not, however, a film for people who crave originality. This is one for people, like me, who can wallow in the simple pleasures of fast-paced crime thrillers and hard-hitting pulp fiction. Writers George Zuckerman and Robert Smith plow well-worn terrain here, with lots of stock characters ricocheting around a pinball plot. But it's delivered with so much punch and panache you can't help but devour every overheated morsel. Look, kid, I'll help you if I can, but don't spoil with me. Tell me what your problem is, I'll see what I can do. All right. I killed a man. You what? Producer Edward Small wanted to shoot it on location in New York in the fall of 1952. At that time, the project was called Crosstown. But Small was juggling three pictures simultaneously, and budget concerns, as well as scheduling conflicts with director Phil Carlson, dictated that the whole thing be shot on the sets and back lots at Goldwyn Studios in Hollywood. Eddie Small is one of the most unjustly overlooked figures in Hollywood history. His real name is Eddie Schmalheiser, born in Savannah in 1891. He wanted to be an actor. But instead, he became the first agent in America to represent vaudeville artists. In his New York offices, well before the motion picture boom, he met many of the men who'd later become his Hollywood associates and his arch rivals, Adolf Zucker, the Skank Brothers, Harry Cohn, and Jesse Lasky. Small represented such soon-to-be significant directors as Maurice Tenure, Charles Braben, Henry King, and John Stahl. He was the agent who sold Norma Shearer to Louis B. Mayer. He discovered Clara Bow before B.P. Schulberg took the credit for it. He produced his first picture in New York in 1917, and he turned the New York agency over to his brother in the late 20s and moved to Hollywood, where he helped Howard Hughes produce the hit Hell's Angels. He later became an outspoken member of the Society of Independent Motion Picture Producers, a lobbying group that grew out of the original United Artists. Small constantly battled against the monopoly the Big Eight studios had on the picture business. He made 35 movies between 1927 and 47, which was when he scored a big hit, producing the landmark noir T-Men, a movie typically attributed to Eagle Lion Films, but which was really produced by Small's company, Reliance Pictures. The star of that movie, Dennis O'Keefe, was one of the few remaining actors Eddie Small still had as a client. The success of T-Men convinced Small of the value of contemporary crime pictures. He'd been making mostly historical adventures, like The Count of Monte Cristo. A string of noirs followed T-Men. Raw Deal, Walk a Crooked Mile, Kansas City Confidential, This Picture, and some lesser successes, like Down Three Dark Streets, New York Confidential, The Naked Street, and one huge hit made in collaboration with several co-producers, Witness for the Prosecution. Small's career was a balancing act. He worked with big studios like RKO, Columbia, and United Artists, which distributed his independently made films, while publicly he excoriated the major studios for wasteful production methods. A typical small picture cost 100 to 300 grand and was shot in less than two weeks. He believed, to the delight of a director like Phil Carlson, that films should be entirely planned out before a nickel was spent rolling film. He was tight with a buck, but small cherished collaborators who were creative within these budget constraints. He found a partner in actor John Payne, himself a pretty savvy businessman. As small was scoring big with T-Men, 
Payne was making the transition from musical comedy star to hard-boiled hunk, just like Dennis O'Keefe had done. Payne also wanted to produce, and his collaboration with Small on this picture, as well as Kansas City Confidential, meant earning 25% of the profits while taking less of an upfront salary. Payne and Small brought director Phil Carlson into the fold, and this producer-director-actor triumvirate intended to make a whole slate of pictures together, the first of which was to be called The Loudest Laugh in Hell. I don't know if that was the original title of Kansas City Confidential or an entirely different film, but it's a title I intend to steal for something. Cross Town was retitled 99 River Street two months before its release in 1953. It features a fantastic gallery of supporting mugs led by Frank Phelan, Brad Dexter, Jay Adler, and Jack Lambert. And sharing the spotlight with Payne are a pair of swell actresses. Evelyn Keyes and Peggy Castle, both of whom sizzle in this one. Lots more about them once the ride is over. Right now, I'm putting up the flag and getting us underway. Next stop, 99 River Street.